My style of food is something that's evolving. Um, I want people to tell me what my style of food is rather than me think too hard into it. We work on great flavours that work extremely well, but may be quite challenging sometimes to the customer. I am Ian Swainson, uh, I work at the Samling Hotel as the head chef, uh, originally from Bournemouth, um, but now working in the Lake District. My style of food has been uh, explained to me more than I've actually come up with it, but it's people talk about it being slightly uh, Nordic style, you know, I think that's a a term that uh, obviously has come from that part of the world, but it's uh, I guess using natural ingredients, getting them to uh, to work well together, getting the best out of the flavours um, that those do. We work on really, you know, quite strong flavours as well. We want people to know know what they're eating. The main challenges for a new dish in creation it's got to be the fact that it's got to work um, and making sure that, that dish is completely balanced at all times. Um, I've eaten in a lot of restaurants where if you eat every single last item on the plate that it works extremely well but as soon as you take a, one or two of those elements out of the equation and just focus on two of them then it doesn't work as a dish at all. Um, so. A dish has to be completely balanced, I guess, is a, a major, major, major thing. Again, you've got to take into consideration so many things. The, the style on the plate and how it looks, making sure the style doesn't overtake the substance. Um, and the whole produce has to be at its best all the time as well. Um, we can't be using Peruvian asparagus as a good example. In, in England when we know that the best asparagus in the world is, is British. So it's, uh, it's a case of making sure that everything is works in alignment with everything else um, to create something that is truly fantastic. Um, and certainly at, what, at the Samling, we would not put anything on the menu that hadn't been tried and tested on a number of times to make sure that it works extremely well, as well as it works in its environment. Well, Foodie Trends is being really interested in your industry. It's very, very easy to fall into the same trends as everyone else. Um, and maybe that's where the whole Nordic style of food uh, may well have come from, that subconsciously, because I'm very, very interested in the Nordic style of cookery, as much as I'm the Spanish style of cookery, as much as I'm the French and the British, as a British nation, we tend to take ideas from all over the world as well as ingredients from all over the world to produce our style of food and it's something that has become quite apparent in the last 10 years of uh, British food being quite in a sort of fusion style of cookery. So. To answer, to answer the question, do I follow food trends? Yes, I probably do. Do I do it subconsciously? Definitely. Um, but again, we're trying to create something that's unique. Um, and, and so, yeah, we'll take certain trends and we might focus on one of those, but then we might try something different. Um, and, it, and it is the case that hopefully those, those small little different changes will eventually become known as our style of food, which maybe other people will, will start to, to use themselves. For me, what I, I'm not really loving at the moment with regards to the industry is it seems to be celebrated that food is very, very, very simple. Um, I think in the restaurant game, when you're trying to create something fantastic, then you want everything to be quite exact. Um, and when it, when it seems to be going very, very rustic, which I think is a shame, 
um, is that I, I believe we're in a fine dining industry, which means that we should be putting on a real show for the customer. And it's not a case of the chef just splodding on a bit of uh, puree or whatever. It should be more of a case of making sure that every last element is fantastic. So as soon as that plate of food comes to the customer, they feel so special and, uh, and wowed by what they're seeing. Um, so I guess probably if I was to say anything, yeah, the rustic style of food is something that I'm not particularly interested in going down. I, I like the fact that I can go to a fine dining restaurant and I don't have to wear a, a, a tie and jacket. I think that's really, really important. It's a customer needs to feel very relaxed in their surroundings. I think we've all been to a meal maybe when we're younger in our career um, where we don't feel, I, I certainly I never used to feel very comfortable wearing a suit. Um, so I'd go to a restaurant and I'd have lots of snooty waiters that at the time I felt were looking down at me because maybe I was wearing a cheap suit. Maybe I knew that they could see that I didn't wear it very much or whatever those scenarios were, I felt uncomfortable whilst eating a meal that I'm paying a lot of money for. And so I feel it's really, really good that you can wear what you want in the majority of restaurants now. I think that side of the, you know, the relaxed atmosphere at a restaurant is absolutely uh, phenomenal. But from the other side of it, um, we, the silver service element of food is something that we really want to work on at the, at the sampling because that's where you get such theatre through food. My food can be as accessible as you like and it can really show a hell of a lot about what I'm about but what I really do believe is that I from my kitchen side can only produce food of such a level. Whereas when we take it to the customer, if we can then produce a great style of service that revolves around that actual dish, then you end up with a dish that's better than it could be by just coming straight out of the kitchen onto the table. Um, so we, we're, wor we're working on styles of service that introduce silver serving um, and those, I guess, lost arts of, uh, of the industry. The industry itself is um, seems to use lots of lots of old style ingredients. Now it seems to be the trend at the moment. Um, like again, you know, keeping veg in boxes of dirt and things like that to keep it keep its flavour and things like that. It's a very very old concept of of cookery. But you know, you got people like Simon Rogan that's that's really pushing that trend back and you know, he's not trying to do it as a trend he's just doing it because he wants the food to taste amazing but people see that and they go well, let's have a go at that and so it becomes a trend in itself and it's because he's a in the forefront of the industry um but uh ingredients that aren't getting used too much well, i use goat's cheese maybe maybe i'm starting a trend myself i don't even know <laughs> don't know um yeah, there's there's probably a hundred a million different things that I am not thinking of. Developing a dish in general, being vegetarian or not, uh, it's an exciting process. Um, and when I'm when I'm not at work, quite often than not, I might have a sandwich or something like that and quite and quite regularly I'll find that it's actually there's no meat involved in in that and it's just uh, that's my that's me just saying oh quite fancy a I don't know a, a brie and tomato sandwich or whatever it is it's just that's what that's what I do so there's actually the process of producing great food shouldn't just relate to it having a major protein into it you know it should be uh, if you're interested in food then it doesn't matter if there's meat or fish or anything like that it's all about just creating something fab fantastic to put on the menu um and yeah i mean you know we all i, I i'm quite protein heavy 
in, in the food that we do here. Um, I like the idea that we have a major hero on the plate, which is usually the piece of meat rather than the vegetable. Um, and uh, But yeah, a, a, a dish is a dish, and if, and if a dish is good, then it's good. And we, we want every dish on our menu to be fantastic if it's vegetarian or, or not.